Good day, Batang Mandunong! This is Project SOAR, series of online academic reviews of mathematics played learning modules for quarter 2 of week 8. So, for this week's episode for Business Mathematics, I'm excited na excited na akong ipakilala sa inyo ang speaker natin. But before that, make sure to like, subscribe, and share our YouTube videos para mas lalong marating ang lahat ng Batang Mandunong na nagtitake na ABM kasi para sa kanila ang business mathematics review lessons na ito. So, wag na nating patagalin. Sino ba ang speaker natin for this week? So, siya ay nagtapos ng Master of Science in Teaching Math Mathematics and Bachelor of Secondary Education, major in mathematics at De La Salle University. Currently, he is a teacher too at mataas na para lang Neptali A. Gonzales. Pasalubungan natin ng masigagbong palakpakan ang ating teacher reviewer for week 8 of quarter 2. Walang iba kundi si Mr. Audric Curtis P. D. Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. Ang topic ang i-discuss natin ay identifying business data and graphs. Okay, so here are the objectives. First, we're going to identify which of the following situations can be considered as business data. Second, we're going to identify the type of chart or graph, whether pie chart, line chart, or bar graph to be used for the following business data. Okay, so what is business data? Okay, a set of business data pertains to information about the business, its transactions, its employees, stakeholders, and its income and expenses. This information, of course, must be gathered and presented with accuracy and must be kept for future purposes. So, bali, anything that involves employees, records about money and transactions, and even income, pati yung mga expenses, basta from the business mismo. Okay, so now we're going to identify which of the following can be considered as business data. Okay, so bank statements, business data ba yan o hindi? We'll see. Business data, why? Because it involves transactions such as depositing and withdrawing money. Okay, pay slips for employees. Business data o hindi? Okay, business data, why? It's because it involves committing transactions with the employee. So, binabayaran mo yung pera para sa empleyado. So, sinusweldohan mo sila. Kasama na rin yung mga kaltas kagaya ng SSS, TIN, pag-ibig. Okay, inflation rate of UK since 2015. Not a business data because it just talks about the inflation rate mismo. Wala naman transaction or wala naman record ang pinag-uusapan dyan, anything business eh. So this doesn't talk about business. Okay, number of customers from January to December 2010. Business data o hindi? Yes, kasi record siya ng mga customer. Kasi customers is also part of business. In short, or tagalugin ko, ang customers ay bahagi ng negosyo. Yun yung nagpapaunlad ng negosyo. Program proposal towards new employees. Business data. Kasi, ito ay parang plan para sa magiging action mo para sa mga bagong empleyado. Kung paano mo sila matrain at paano mo sila i-groom para maging successful ang business nyo. Kaya business data siya. Okay, so we're now going to talk about graphs. Okay, so when we say a bar graph, okay, this is commonly used when the data in a set belong to the same category or class. This is effective when you want to see the values in comparison to each other. So if you want to compare values, you better use the bar graph. Okay, when we say a line graph, it is commonly used for showing trends or progression of a series of data, usually across a timeline. So yung timeline, for example, January to December, from Monday to Sunday, from year by year. So this is where we're going to see kung nagpo-progress siya or nagre-regress. So, bale, para siyang rate of change. Remember linear equations, right? Yung nag increase or nag decrease Okay. So, when you say pie chart, this is commonly used for showing data as components of a whole. So, yung whole na yun ay nagre-represent sa 100%. So, yung mga parts, yun yung mga iba't-ibang responses or iba't-ibang tao na may hawak yung sa sales. Kunwari, 
Um, total sales ito. Oh, so, in a group of five, ang total ay nakapag-ipon ng 100,000 pesos. So, for example, yung mga tao, for example, let's say, si human A, si human B, si human C, si human B. So, kanya-kanyang earnings yan dito eh. So, para siyang pizza pie, kumbaga. Okay, so we're going to determine which chart are you going to use for the situation. Team Green's total sales earned by its five members for the month of November 2020. So, nakikita niyo to, di ba? Ang members niyan ay si Gretel, whose sale is 123,000. Si Ferdy naman, 145,000. Si Ellen, 109,000. Si Danny, 111,000. And Carlos, 98,000. So, so kanya-kanyang sales ito. So, If you want to know what chart are you going to use, okay, so, bucket pie chart. Kasi, ang pinag-uusapan ay total eh. So, yung, yung bilog na yon yun yung nagre-represent sa total sales. Okay, yung mga parts, it rep is represented by the member. Okay, so, ito yung example ko. So, ito yung mga, ano, sales na pinag-iipunan ng bawat member. Yung buong circle na yun, yun yung total earnings mismo or yung total sales mismo. Okay, so si Carlos ay 98,000, si Danny ay 11,000, si Ellen ay 109,000, si Ferdy ay si 145,000 at si Greta ay 123,000. Dito we can also interpret kung sino yung pinakamalaking sales. So based sa pinakamalaking sales, si Ferdy. Pero ang pinakakonti dyan, si Carlos. So, bale, bawat member sa grupo ay parte ng isang pie chart. Okay, second example. Number of check-in guests in luxury hotel from August to December 2019. So, from the month of, the, of August, we have 576 guests. While in September, 615 guests. October, 504 guests. While in November, 492 guests. And December, 670 guests. Okay. So, since timeline siya from August to December, or in short, ordinal variable siya, we can say that line graph. Bakit line graph? Kasi this is where we can see kung nag improve yung number of check-in guests, kung dumadami ba ang customers or yung guests sa luxury hotel mismo. Okay. So, ito po yung example natin. Oh, sa August naman, 576 po ang number of guests. Tapos sa September naman ay 615 guests. Tapos October naman ay 504 guests. Sa November naman, 492 guests. At sa December, 670 guests. To interpret this, okay, from August, dumadami ang guests ng September. Tapos bumababa naman nung October. Tapos pababa siya nung November. Pero nag-increase siya nung December. Siguro... Christmas season, marami na nag-check in yan. Oh, so, we can interpret this data through this figure mismo. Okay, last example. Okay, ratings given by dining customers towards the service of Lusog Sarap Restaurant. So, yung rating na yan from 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. ba diba gusto natin malaman kung sino ang pinakamaraming responses, kung ang rating ang pinakamadaming responses. Okay, so 180 respondents had given a rating of 5. While si 175, si 4. Si 70 naman, si 3. Si 75 naman ay si 2. At si 30 ay si 1. So in order to know the chart, okay, so the answer is bar graph. Okay, we will see bakit. Because our aim is to compare kung sino ang pinakamadaming responses. So, based on the chart, ang pinakamadami ay si 5. Pumapangalawa naman si 4. Si 2 naman ang pumapangatlo. Si 1 ang pinakakonti. Pero ang second sa pinakamababa si 3. So, ibig sabihin nun, pasadong-pasado ang ratings ng restaurant na to at ang pinakamaraming responses ay si 5. Okay, so do not forget to subscribe the MTM channel. Okay, so go type 
MTM channel sa search mismo. Then once you see that, you click the subscribe. Then also hit the notification bell. So thank you and God bless you. Have a great day. Happy learning.